Hey, what's going on guys? Alex with C1N and you are on the road to the bowl. What bowl you're asking? That is the Bless the Babies Bowl where some of the best in the country come to play. It'll be December the 2nd through the 8th in Cocoa Beach, Florida. Now on this show, you are gonna see highlights of the top players, interviews, and rankings. Hey, no need to wait. Let's get straight to it. GA taking on the ATM boys in the 8 nerd division. In a very good game, look at the blocking up front as they run this counter. And Callie De Niro Brown takes it to the house. Come on, ref, you got to catch up with him. Now you got to beat him to the end zone <laughs> as ATM would win the game. 703 taking on Watkins Hornet, and 703 would come out firing. Let's watch the receiver here. Breaks a couple of tackles, catches the slant, and he is up out of there as 703 would get on the scoreboard early. Watkins Hornet would answer though later in the game, finding their big receiver over the middle of the field as not a DB would be in sight as the Watkins Hornet would get into the end zone and this number 18 would have a great day on him. 703 responding though. And again, we said they would get the lead, get the lead early and not look back as their passing game was rolling for them. Had a couple of big runs too, but they would get the lead. But check out this play right here. Watkins Hornet, quarterback, nice pass. Watch out, cameraman, he is in the way. The Watkins Hornet receiver would take care of the rest, get into the end zone, but it would not be enough as 703's defense would pretty much shut the door for them as 703 wins the game. 12 and under division, Lambeau taking on the Atlanta Chargers. Watch this quarterback here. Leaks out to his left side, breaks a couple of tackles, finds his guy across the middle of the field. I'll tell you what, that is some phenomenal play by the quarterback position. Sure that uh, good old C1N founder Cam Newton is going to enjoy that one. All right, quarterback. Getting outside, nice short pass to his receiver, and the receiver takes care of the rest, reads the block, and get up the field, scores a touchdown, and Lambeau would have an early lead in the game. Lambeau back again on offense. One of the bright spots for the Atlanta Chargers. Nice interception by the DB. Gets as many yards as he can, gets upfield to help give the Atlanta Chargers just a little bit of momentum but it will be all Lambo as watch big number 99. Bats the ball out the quarterback's hands, keeps it for himself, catches it, and rumbles and stumbles, gets into the end zone. He would score a touchdown as Atlanta elite Lambo would win 28 to zero. Lambo looks good and they look like they are ready to be considered one of the top teams in the country. Again, look, I've been following this team since five years old. And every single year, they just continue to get better and better and better. All right, guys, next highlights coming up. This is featuring the team Voodoo. For those that don't know about Voodoo, I don't think I've ever seen Voodoo lose. Let's check it out. Voodoo versus Eastside, 10 nerd division. The new national C1N rankings are in. At five and under, at number one, Municipal Raiders out of Alabama. At number two, Atlanta Elite. Number three, Georgia Falcons. Number four, Bessemer. And at number five, Xavier Elite. 
In the six and under C1N national rankings, GEA takes the top spot. Right behind them is Bessemer Tigers from Alabama. And then coming up in the rear would be MBK Academy. At seven and under, another Georgia team. It seems like the Georgia teams are dominating these C1N national polls here. Atlanta Elite and again, Bessemer from Alabama. At number three, up north, Cincy Hedgehog Boys. At number nine, Old Town Ducks from Detroit. And then Hemi Boys bringing up the rear. At the eight and under division, ranked number one in the country, Adamsville. Following behind them, Pompano Chiefs. Then you see the Rare Breeze making their way and Space City, and of course TNT from Texas, and then at the bottom, PPP, which is Peter Park Panthers from Alabama. In the nine and under division, RDE takes the top spot with So Icy taking unfortunately a loss this week. Pompano Eagles following up, Hulk Boys, and closing out the rankings is Relentless. In 10 and under, at number one, probably the team that everyone knows about, the Atlanta Elite Voodoo, followed by Murmar Wolverine and then Del Ray Rocks. At 11 and under, led by Coach James in the C1N National Polls, the Georgia Eagles. At number two, the Torrance City Ducks. At number three, MCU. At number five, let's go out there to Texas, DEA. West Georgia, excuse me, West Orlando following them up. And then at number 10 will be AME from Kentucky. In the 12 and under division. At number one, Fort Lauderdale Hurricanes. Going down the list, you see Alpha Dogs, North Carolina. Then Built Academy out of Texas. NTB, Bulldogs out of Missouri. Watkins out of D.C. Of course, the Atlanta Elite Lambo team that we just showed earlier, and then Philly stand up, North Philly Blackhawks. In the 13 and under division for the C1N national ranking, at number one, Rare Breed. They are considered the most dominant team in the country, hands down. Following them will be Boyden Bulldogs, Miami Garden Ravens, led by a good coach over there, Coach Mack, known very well, Detroit Cubs, OG Ducks out of Cali, Primetime Elite, Trey Man Elite, Las Vegas Tribe, Certified South, and DMV University. What's going on, guys? I hope you are enjoying the show. I told you we have some great highlights. We have the rankings there on the road to the Bless the Baby Bowl, which we hope you guys are enjoying and getting ready for. Look, coming up next, we have an interview with Coach Keith from the OG Ducks. Matter of fact, he's on right now. Coach Keith, how you doing, man? Man, I'm good. Just in practice, you know, getting our final uh, little uh, few packages in before we get down there to charge and compete. Hey, Coach. Now, what made you start the OG Ducks? Uh, about about 14 years ago, I actually got kicked out of my league for <laughs> for having hosting camps in the off season for a dollar. Said we couldn't talk to the kids, so they kicked me out my league, and, and I was with the Corona Panthers, and. So I took my team to another league and told them, hey, if you let me in with this one team, I'll bring your whole organization the next year. And what happened was halfway through the season, my organization kind of left me out to dry. So then at that time, I had J.J. Taylor, who plays for the uh, uh, Houston Texans. We were trying to figure out who he wanted to be. And that was right when Oregon started kind of popping off with all the uniforms. So we chose they, – the kids chose to be the uh, – they wanted to be the Ducks. That's how we started the Ducks. And I liked it at the time. It wasn't – too many uh, too many teams that was the Ducks at the time when we did it. Obviously, you know Cam Newton and the, the player he was on the field. And look, at the end of the day, he was all about competing at the highest level. For you with the OG Ducks, what made you guys want to be involved with what C1N has going on? Uh, pretty much because we just we like to compete. I mean, they tried to get us down there for the one in, on Labor Day, but it was just too late. And we were really looking at it. If the tickets would have been right, we'd have came. Anybody knows me knows <laughs> we want to go play any and everybody. We want to play the best. So that's what, you know, we built our brand on out here is is playing anybody. We, we've been to Hawaii. We've been to Florida. Now we're about to fly back across the country and go to, to Charlotte. So there's nobody that has more miles than us when it comes to playing football this year. 
Coach, there are some great programs around the country that I'm sure you know well, whether it's Rare Breeze, whether it's Miami Garden. Can I ask you, are you the best program in the country? Uh, I, I feel like you got to put us in the top top tier. Um, you know, I love what DeMarcus is doing at Rare Breeze. But they're, to me, they're a one, one team show. Um, Broad with the Miami Gardens is really a great program. West Orlando is a great program, top to the bottom. But I would like to think we're in the conversation with all of them. But a lot of times we don't get to showcase our other age groups just because we're the only team this far out. And it's like we can't travel every, you know, every week across the country where y'all, you guys have, you know, if you're in Atlanta, you can get to Alabama, you can get to Florida, y'all all right on top of each other where y'all can drive. And it was like that for us. I, like I said, I would love to be in that situation to be able to go up and down the coast. We'd be in Florida every week if we had to, to play the best. Coach, man, we appreciate you so much for coming on. Hey, stay healthy, have a good season, and we look forward to seeing you guys later down the road. Next on the show is Coach Mike. Mike, I know you're up right now. I know you're listening. I know you're smiling, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, look, man, you played football, right? You, you had a couple of good days that people got a chance to see. How have you been able to take your football days and translate it into coaching and, you know, just moving this youth, prog youth program forward with uh, HL Elite? Well, what I I guess starting off, you know what I'm saying, what I have able what I have been able to do is I have been able to take like the, the good the good days and the bad days for me playing and been able to give it back to the boys. You know, um I dealing with football, you got a lot of ups and downs. I think the kids just see the the um the glamour and see all the like, you know what I'm saying, the money getting spent and dance and all, but they don't see behind the scenes and the hard work that you gotta put in and the dedication to really try to, you know what I'm saying, get to that point of going to play college ball and pro ball, because it's not easy. And then the ones that get to college football, I got a lot on us in there now, learning hard that, you know, you know, just because you're getting NIL money and all that, it's still not easy. You got to work, you know what I'm saying? So, can can be taken from you. The game can be taken from you any day. So, I think the most important thing I'm giving to the babies is first the fundamentals and just, like, you know, what, what you know, things that have been taught, um, teaching the proper way of blocking it, you know, all the small things. And then I think to the older guys, just getting them ready, getting them prepared for the real world when they got to go out on their own. Now, Mike, you know, if you were blocking for me back in the day, then, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I think I might have been able to put some yards up behind you. Uh, but look, man, offensive line is one of your specialties. If you look, you have guys now in the college ranks. You have guys doing well in high school. Kind of that is your forte, right? Uh, you tell me about coaching the offensive line and coaching the young kids and making sure it translates. The, the most important thing is, like, I've been able to teach babies how to block their proper way. And I think by teaching them the proper way, you know, translate to when they get to high school. Like, at Langston Hughes, I got a couple of kids that played me since they were seven. I mean, they're, like, they're bona fide athletes right now, you know, headed to college. And uh, one of them is Dontrell Glover, man. I love him. He like he like my kid. He like my kid, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and the way he works uh, on and off the field, like, I, you know what I'm saying? It just that 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 determination, that, that, that dedication that we put in from – you know, from a baby, it, it paid off. You know, Mike, one of the things I've seen you do, whether it's at the high school level, again, college level, that is what it is. But at the youth level, I've noticed you like to play the best competition that's out there for your kids. Why do you do that? I think I get them ready. Starting you, I learned with my last two groups I had that if you get them to, you know what I'm saying, like, okay, for, uh, prime example, you know, we used to play a lot of Texas team out there in DFW. You know, the, you know, the, the great funny thing about it, I was laughing today with Coach Tony that's from there, you know, uh, that just sold on them Duncanville team. That's most of the boys we played against. So I think that got my kids ready to play, you know what I'm saying? And I think it definitely got them ready for the Power 5 Division One football. So I think what you do early is, you know, you travel, you, you get them, you get them jitterbugs out. So they'll be used because sometimes they get used to hitting the same folks in Atlanta, you know, but you take them outside of 25, 85, let them experience something different that when it's time to go to college, like you see KJ and them right now, man, like they, they, they tan it up because they so used to traveling way before they even got to the University of Georgia or, you know, wherever they may be, Ohio State or whatever. So, yeah, I think that's the most important thing that we try to put in and like implement that we travel and take the kids out, you know what I'm saying? So it just, it would be like another trip for them when they get to, um, when they get to where they were trying to go. All right, Mike, we plan to see you in October up in Charlotte. Uh, if you could just give us a rundown on what's going to happen when they see your team on the field. 
Yeah, we're expected to dominate down in Charlotte. You know what I'm saying? We're looking forward to it. Uh, Cam event, man, which, you know, Cam is um, – he's very supportive in the organization, ATLE. I mean, I love my guy. You know, I raised him. You know what I'm saying? It's my dog. You feel me? So, uh, you know, him bringing his babies back to my organization was big for me, man. Like, I, I would definitely appreciate it. We're going to support everything he does moving forward, him and dad. Brother, you know, all of them, man. You know, they family. So we looking, we looking forward to dominate. We're looking forward to dominate at all ages. I know eight's going. I think my nines are going and my tens. So we're looking to dominate. You know what I'm saying? Eight just coming off a big win against GEA. You know, I had to take care of Ken. <laughs> so, you know, we looking forward, uh, we looking forward to it, man, having fun and enjoying Charlotte. And um, yeah, we we plan to go out there and dominate. Mike, we appreciate you so much for coming on. Before we finish up, we have to acknowledge the guy, the player of the week, Jamil Sherrod with the ATM boys. Look, man, instead you were doing your thing on the D-line and the O-line. Salute to you, man. Great job out there. Hey, guys, that is it for this week. We hope you enjoyed it. Look, great highlights, great interviews. Everything just fantastic, man. The C1N way, the bless the babies way the road to the bowl. We hope to see you guys there. And also too, look, if you see a ball or somebody out there, man, young man doing this thing, go ahead and give him a shout out. Send this stuff into us. We will be featuring him on the show. Other than that, take care. See you next week.